Hi, welcome to 15minuteguitar.com. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the three big guns of amps. Uh, we had a lot of positive comments and reviews on our three big guns guitar video, so thank you very much for those. Um, so as a sort of a part two, yep. this is going to be the three big guns of valve amplifiers. So let's get started. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at today is the Vox AC30. Uh, all these amplifiers are owned by you, Ash, mm -hmm. and you sort of know and love each one of these quite well. Uh, you know all the different sort of specifications in, about each amp and what makes them different. I think. Uh, what would you say makes the Vox um, give it a unique sound, and why do you think people like it so much? Okay, so Vox amplifiers. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about tubes uh, today. So this is just the thing that happens in valve amplifiers. We should yeah. probably start a preface with this. Yeah. Valve amplifiers use these things called tubes, mm -hmm. which are these little sort of kind of glass, glass cylinder bottles, things, yeah. block bottles. Yeah. yeah. And there's a certain amount of them in the preamp. Is that an American thing, though? And we say tubes and valves is like the British thing. I can't remember. I switch up all the time. I think so tubes I... is like the American way of saying it, and valves is like a British way. Right. I don't know. I, I may be that's wrong. That's okay. I think that's right. I say tubes. Tubes I or think. valves, so, whatever you want to call them. So uh, we have we have preamp tubes and we have power amp tubes. And one of the things that makes the AC30 sound the way that it sounds is an EL84 power amp tube. Okay. okay? And yeah. there's I think there's four in this one. Mm -hmm. I've don't quote me on that, but yeah. it's definitely EL84s, okay? And the, each of the amps kind of has their own specific mm. tube they use that's, that sound, makes the sound of that amp. Yeah. Um, the other thing will be certain kinds of speakers and things like that. So AC30s are also really, really commonly, um, people seem to love them most with Alnico style speakers. Okay. Uh, most famously in this one, we have um, Celestian Alnico blue speakers. Yeah. Um, you can actually buy the them. The green ones. Uh, yeah. yeah, the greenbacks are ceramic. Okay. So they're a bit different. They're kind of on the... Um, some people prefer ceramics with the other two amps that we're going to look at today. Okay. Um, yeah. There's no hard and fast rule. They all sound different. Yeah. I've tried Alnico with... Is with it's open back as well? I didn't check it. It is open back, yes. Yeah, okay. So um, if you don't know what open back is, that basically means that a, a compartment of the back of the amp is open, so it will shoot sound backwards. Um, I find in bands people actually quite like this because if you have a closed back amp, the sound will just shoot forward, yes. which if you haven't got monitors real issue the drummer will quite often go I can't hear your amp but you can't turn it up because out front you'll be blast in the front row whereas open back the sound will shoot backwards it's as really, well it's as really, really funny you say that because I get that for the drummer's perspective is really good mm. but I, I didn't really like open back cabs when I had them so I had like a Fender that had an open back cab yeah. I never got on with it I felt like I was losing too much sound out the back of it mm -hmm. as opposed to I prefer like the closed back sound which is more sort of Punchy and direct. Yeah. yeah. But I completely get what you're saying about a drummer being sat behind can't hear the guitarist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get a bit they get sound coming out of the back. Well the way these were designed actually, it's really interesting. If you look at the top panel of this, um, it seems like the 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 panel's in a weird place because it's kind of at the back of the guitar instead of at the back of the amp instead of at the front. Right. Um, and the reason they did that is because these were originally designed, the Beatles loved these amps. Okay. And they were originally designed to be PA speakers, oh, really? so they were supposed to sit at the front of the stage. The wow. band was supposed to be behind them, so you'd edit everything, and then all of this stuff would shoot forward. Well, I didn't know that. So yeah, so anyway, that leads us on a nice segue actually to yeah. people who love these amplifiers. Yeah. So the Beatles, first okay. and foremost, George Harrison, uh, John Lennon, AC thirties through and through. And for me, I said about Brian May is really sort of the chap that I think yeah. of as soon as I see the AC thirty. Yeah, Brian May loves them. The Edge also really, really big, um, really big AC thirty fan. Um, Rory Gallagher. Uh, blues guitar player, slide mm -hmm. blues guitar player, excellent. Put a strap through this and it sounded wicked. So all these guys, and, and that what you just said there is really interesting, like the strap as well. All these guys, for me, the ones we're saying, like Brian May, Roy Gallagher, these are all people that like that high, high, chimey sort of top end. Yeah. If you're using a strap with it as well, that's going to accent accentuate that. Yeah, so I would say that's what this amp does really well. It cuts the low end off yeah. and gives you kind of really good mid punch mm -hmm. and kind of an upper sort of it's brighter people call it jangly quite a lot okay. people describe the sound as quite jangly but it's mid-rangey whereas a fender amp sound will be quite scooped mm -hmm. or an american sort of sound yeah this will be more british more mid-rangey okay and so built, and built in with this just before you go on to the playthrough that's right we've got reverb and tremolo. there's reverb and tremolo on these so it depends on the model this is one of the chinese made ones i've had this since i was about 17 yeah. 16. Um, is it valve driven tremolo? It is, uh, yes. So it yeah. is an actual reverb tray. I think the trem is analog as well. I'm okay. not. Don't quote me on that. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Um, but everything in the amp is pretty much, you know, analog. Okay. Cool. Let's That's do some playing. Yeah. Oh, we better turn it off standby. That's That'd be good. good idea, yeah. it? It's the reason why we turned it off. Put on standby is because it's so hissy when it's loud. It's got yeah. sort of a loud some of the amps will be like that. Sound, but here we go.
that's what I'm hearing there, as you, as you said, is that real, real high end. It's really cutting through. It's the it's the mid range more than the high end. So it's really jangly. But what you'll find on a gig if you use one of these mm -hmm. is they sit in a band mix so well because they just have that bottom. If you sit in front of it, like you said, it feels really cutting. It feels like it's kind of in your face. Yeah. Whereas if you're standing back from the amp on a gig, yeah. that directional thing is actually great because it allows it shelves off that ba that low end so that mm -hmm. the bass can sit there and puts you sort of in the top so that you're sitting above everything but you're not getting in the way of the vocals too yeah, much. Okay. Um, I actually think this thing sounds great with a Telecaster. So yeah, why don't you have a little go with this? Stand way switch. Ooh, wherever it is, there it is. I'll hand you that one. No worries. Very much. So you maybe set the EQ up a bit different, maybe from a Les Paul. I'll have a little look. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it will be bright. Straight away from that playing, yeah. Brad Paisley yeah. loves AC30s because they do that thing. And with Telecasters, I think they're sort of made for each other. Yeah, they're okay. just sort of like chocolate and ice cream. They just go really together really, yeah, really okay. well. Um, let's try and get some dirt out of it. Yeah. So this amp sounds equally as good overdriven. Um, the benefit of the overdrive of this as well, a Marshall, which we'll get onto, I always think about it as with a Marshall style amp, if you play a power chord, like a three chord thing, a Marshall yeah. will take those three notes, like fifth intervals and things, glue them together in sort of like a fist. Yeah. Makes it really, really strong. AC30s don't do that as well, but what they do do really well is complicated chords. Yeah, okay. So if you play like sus chords yeah. or um, really open sounding chords, mm -hmm. AC30s manage that really well because they kind of take off that negative feedback. So you still get that nice clear, beautiful, all the notes, yeah. beautifully clean. Yeah. So people describe it as a crunch amp really. So okay. let's do a little bit of messing. It certainly does sound analog, sort of very warm mm. uh, swell to it. So. Very nice. Very different to a Fender tremolo. I think I think this has got an optical tremolo in it. Right. Fenders have bias tremolos in it. Okay. So you might want to do some research into what the difference in those are. They do sound a bit different, but it just still sounds like tremolo Great. to me. So that's the Vox AC30. Yeah. Uh, go and try one out at your local music shop and see if you like one. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the, is it the Fender or? Uh, so before I get into that, I'm going to say one little thing about the AC30. Just, oh, okay. I've Sorry. just remembered. Yeah, yeah. This thing is a backbreaker. Right. It is so heavy. Um, that comes from experience for the Fender. Yeah, I've used it for <laughs> years and years and years. It is really, really heavy. My band hate it because right. they hate lifting it. So if you are going to think about an AC30, Go to the gym, <laughs> right. or just think about that because it is Roughly, really. What do you think it weighs? Like I I wouldn't like to guess. Twenty five, twenty. I again, I more than that. Don't think I'd want to. No. I'd want to maybe put a number on it, but it is heavy. It normally is a bit of a two man. I can do it on my own, but it is quite often a two man lift. It's quite for awkward me. with the handles maybe on top. I don't know. Yeah, for me it sounds so good. I kind of put up with it, yeah. but it's um, 
it, it really depends, but it's probably the heaviest of them. So if you are going to invest in one, mm -hmm. maybe you can look at the AC15, which is half the size, but it's just one speaker and um, and sounds as good. So it looks heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it weighs <laughs> a ton. So, but it's great. So let's move on to the next one, which I think we'll do the Fender next. All right, so big gun amp number two. So this is a Fender Deluxe Reverb. Um, it's one's called a 68 Silver Face, okay? Uh, if you'll hear Fender amps get called things like tweeds, silver faces, black faces, the face thing doesn't actually relate to the grill cloth. It relates to the panel, okay? So whatever the panel is, in the late 60s, they were this silver color. Um, the really, really popular ones are the black faces, which will have the, the kind of the black kind of thing to them. Quick question for you, because I've always wondered, what's yeah. the difference between this and the twin reverb? Uh, so speakers and wattage, same, similar to the AC30. Right. So an AC30 will be um, 30 watts with two speakers. Mm -hmm. AC15 will be 15 watts with one. Right. A deluxe reverb is 22 watts yeah. with one speaker, and I think a twin is 40, okay. I think. Um, they do actually sound quite a lot different. So we should probably say this about wattage as well. Depending on the wattage of an amp, mm -hmm. the quieter, it's no hard and fast rule, but like lower the wattage is, the easier the amp will distort. It yeah. will reach, it will have less what we call headroom, which is as ha loud as the amp can go before it starts to Break distort. Yeah. So a 15 watt amp uh, will take more time. The AC30 obviously will take, uh, you have to turn it up a lot higher to get it to naturally distort. What do you say this one was? This is a so this is a deluxe reverb, uh, and that'll be twenty two watts. watts. So it's okay. pretty, it's pretty loud, but um, people actually quite like these for their distortion sound as well, which we'll look at in a minute. Okay. Um, so Fender amps. So we would describe uh, the sound of Fenders as an American sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, as I said with the Voxes, the British sound is, tends to be quite mid rangey. Yeah. The Fender sound is the opposite. It's quite scooped. So the, what that means is we have a lot of high, a lot of low not a whole lot of mid-range okay. okay so it sort of gets cut which makes for a really really nice clean sound mm -hmm. you get that what you know that kind of glassy thing yeah um so valves in this one we got six so these are six v6s six um yeah. some of them will have six l6s or six v6s That's power amps uh power amp tubes yeah. yes so this has got six v6s in it um also a single ceramic speaker um we've got a celestian v type in here and uh they're just they're just great amps, um, but then Fenders are kind of known for their clean sound. So famous players, who do you reckon? Uh, off the top of my head, trying to think of any Fender. It's, it must be obvious, really. But the so uh, people in country music really really love these. Yeah. So going back to like earliest things, this is also probably one of the most recorded amps in history. A deluxe reverb is like yeah. The one people I think Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters uses one. The guitarist from the Foo Fighters. So not traditionally, no. He would use uh, a supersonic. I thought he used to use. Uh, no. So Dave Grohl switched to supersonics, and they're quite different. Ah, so okay. deluxe reverbs are, are quite popular with um, with country guys. So I would say, and blues guys as well. So your John Mayers, obviously. Yeah. Um, probably as well, I'd say. Uh, so Chris Stapleton, if anybody's a country music fan, mm -hmm. just released his own uh, Fender Princeton, yeah. which is kind of a lower wattage. Uh, wattage thing. Uh, Larry Carlton used uh, deluxes and Princetons mm -hmm. back in the, back in the old days. Yeah. Um, blues players love them. Yeah. Really, they're kind of that rootsy. They take pedals well. Don't they, they do yeah. take pedals really really yeah. well. And they're that kind of rootsy undergroundy tone. Mm -hmm. um, but they do that glassy Fender thing. I also think they've matched Fender guitars absolutely perfectly. Like a Fender Strat, Fender Telecaster into a Fender amp for me just sounds amazing. Yeah. The only thing you got to watch with Fender amps is they can get quite bright yeah um, and they also do have a lot of bass so where i say they're american sounding and they've got that mid-range scooped mm -hmm. out if that mid-range is scooped out you've got a lot of other stuff so yeah. you've got a lot of treble a lot of bass yeah. um actually quite often it's not uncommon for me on this amp to actually play it with the bass rolled all the way off okay i've done that lots of times and i suppose you could use something like a tube screamer that's what's very common to use yeah that so that mid-range so tube screamer again yeah. like uh what was the analogy I used earlier? Chocolate and ice cream? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tube Screamer is great because the Tube Screamer is a mid range boost. So that would put the mid range back into the amp, mm -hmm. cut all the low end out. Okay. So focus it in a bad yeah. mix. Um, but let's have a listen anyway. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> this is clean with no reverb, it's completely dry, isn't it? This is completely up. dry at the moment. <laughs> So 
So yeah, yeah. the one. Uh, try some country stuff on the bridge pickup as well. Yeah. So the other thing we just brought in there, yeah. spring reverb. People absolutely love the Fender spring reverbs. Mm -hmm. I, they just have a sound to them and they sound excellent. Um, but yeah, really nice. So if I turn that right, that's very subtle as well. It's on like four. I'll turn that all the way up. Try that. Hank Marvin in the shadows, right? Yeah. So, so that's that. They also come with a, a tremolo circuit in them. So I'm going to roll this back. I'm going to bring this tremolo in just a little well, bit. One note as well to say, when your amp's on, the valve amp, not that you should move it really anyway, but with the spring reverb, if you do move it and bob it down, oh, it'll, it'll make this like, horrible like, <laughs> <laughs> noise. Yeah. The worst noise. Never move your amp when it's on. Right, so there's um, a little bit of tremolo tank. in that now. So have a go at that. Yeah. So they're great for that. What people forget about though with these lower wattage fenders, all of the early records mm -hmm. in the day, the only way to get distortion before we actually knew how to make preamp distortion and things like that yeah. was we had to turn amps up. Yeah. So these amps actually sound really, really good turned up. So we've put the Oxbox in place here. So we're uh, this is more for our safety than your safety. <laughs> so. So this is this is attenuator basically. We're, yeah, we're using this to basically. And just control to explain, just doesn't know what that means. Attenuation it basically means that you can crank the amp, turn it up to max, and this will allow it to just bring it down, and it will obviously clip, um, you know, break up easier. Yeah. Um, and you can still have a level that you can actually. So it's manageable, yeah. sort of thing. So I'm going to turn this amp all the way up. You'll hear the amp start to really fry. Normally we'd have to evacuate the room now. If yeah, if, if, if Rich just tried to play there, we would all be deaf, okay? So now I'm gonna just click this back a couple of clicks, and now we should be at a nice playable volume. <laughs> So yeah, great Fender amps, awesome. Uh, if you want that kind of gain sound, and you're not using an attenuator, uh, twins are going to be quite hard to get that noise out of because okay. they're really high head boom. Twins were uh, Fender twins were made to stay clean as they possibly could yeah, for as long as they can. Yeah. Um, so pedals were probably good over that one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Pedals do t like traditionally sound quite good into these uh, into these amps. I found as well um, guitars without too much low end yeah. do well in this. My Les Paul does sound good in this, but I have to set it up specifically. So remember what I said about that bass being all the way off? Yeah. If I was putting my Les Paul through this, I need to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to just kind of fart out in the bottom end and not sound very nice. Okay. Um, so if you want an app that does that, yeah, so Deluxe Reverb's great for it. Maybe getting a bit loud. Try a Princeton. So a Princeton is a little smaller. It's got a 10-inch speaker in it. Yeah. And uh, and they, they do that same thing. They just distort I, and it's quite martially as well yeah. old marshals were built off of the early fender basements so you get a kind of a martially flavor out of it so in terms of the cheaper end of the spectrum as well like a blues deluxe or something like yeah, that would be hot, yeah hot rod deluxe yeah. things like that they'll they'll do that so um yeah i love i love this amp it's uh, it's the one i'm taking with me everywhere i go yeah. so all right excellent so that's the fender 
move on to amp number three. I'm scared for this one. <laughs> All right, big gum amp number three. Okay, so now we're on to Marshalls. Uh, I guess these are the ones that everybody likes yeah. the best just because they are the sound of classic rock. Uh, British rock sound, isn't it? It is. So what we've got here is a, uh, this is a, a vintage amp. This is a 1978 uh, 50-watt Marshall JMP. Yeah. Um, Marshalls sound a bit different, but more or less they're going to get you that rock and roll sound. I've tried, I've tried 800s, I've tried Jubilees, I've tried all sorts of different ones, and they do more or less get you that noise that you yeah. want. And you really like Marshalls as well, yeah, so you're kind of the... Uh, okay, is this Jim Marshall? What? Maybe if you know. I don't know. I, I I'll, know. I'll do the research yeah, into yeah. that. That would, make, wondered, that would make sense if it was. Jim Marshall. Um, Plexi? No. Maybe Plexi Jim Marshall amp, products. Yeah. It could be anything. I'll have a look. We'll, we'll have a research look. that and find out. Uh, but yeah, so this thing is really bright. I'm going to say that now. And people always think, oh, they plug them in and go, oh, they do, it's really bright. Why is that so bright? People knew back when we didn't have PA speakers that the only way to get above a band mix was to have a really trebly amp. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, that's why this amp's bright. It's supposed to be bright by design, um, but it does sound awesome. Uh, we've got everything set cranked. Haven't we? we yeah, apart from the presence. One of those things that you have to do to these uh, amps is to get them to sound good is really crank them. And um, we've got the attenuator, which you can't see. It'll be out of shot. Just out of shot it's kind of up there. <laughs> um, we've got that notched back to about three okay and this is still just like on that edge of like this might be a little bit too much for us it's also going through a 112 um we're just using the speaker out of the fender there's a there's a jack on the back that we can just use the speaker um ceramic speaker in this really really common uh marshall players ah uh, slash slash sure yeah um, paul kossoff we've gone through these for the les paul Jimi hendrix Le again i'm gonna use my analogy again yeah. chocolate and ice cream yeah les paul and a marshall are the ones okay specifically because les pauls are quite dark sounding guitars they don't have a whole lot of top end in them mm -hmm. these amps have all the top end for days so they match really well because of that no hard and fast rule but i've found particularly in the opposite to the fender the fender if i have a particularly loud guitar or a bassy guitar mm -hmm. doesn't sound so good because the fender's amp's got so much bass right this has got so much bite that if I use a Telecaster, we will do a little bit with it. We probably won't play for very long because it will knock our ears off. But you play a bright guitar through these, it's... it's have we got the treble set Treble off? is all the way off, off yeah. yeah. And obviously in better days. But <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a relic, mate. It's a it is a relic. <laughs> but it sounds awesome. Um, and it's really loud. 50 watts is super loud. So, uh, yeah, old style players. JMPs are more classic rocky as well, so they don't get quite as gainy. Mm -hmm. um, slash, guys like that, more like those 80s, 90s people. They'll be using Jubilees, like, yeah. Jubilees JCM 800s. Yeah. They tend to be a bit gainier. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're great. Uh, slight, a slight problem with Marshalls, and I think they've rectified it recently. Mm -hmm. They're all loud. 50 watts is a low power Marshall, essentially. I yeah. think you can get some like, 20, uh, 20 watt yeah, marshals can. now ones, can, which yeah. is great because they were just ridiculously loud um but up until sort of this year or the last couple of years you've only really been able to get 50 to 100 watt marshals yeah. so um this is 50 watts so this is less of an ear bleeder um well, do we speak about the valves that are in this thing as well? yeah so, so uh still a british sound yeah voxes had el84s in the power section yeah marshals traditionally have el34s in the power section yeah. okay which uh sound a bit different Still very mid rangey but it's a it's a different sound. They're part of what makes that kind of yeah. that Marshall um, that Marshall sound. We've got high and a low input on these as well. All of these amps have got high and low inputs. Mm -hmm. um, high input is just louder essentially, or more gainy. Yeah. Um, I prefer myself using the low inputs on all of my amps because mm -hmm. it means it leaves me the room to use pedals to drive them on top of more, it, yeah. and um, you can get the amp cranked and it doesn't quite get as loud before it starts doing the thing you want it to do. Yeah. Um, Cool. So without further ado, let's have a little listen. That's what it sounds like. That's 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 the Marshall sound. Uh, 
So try rolling your volume down. Something I really like on this on this particular one is um, it's got something called we call a bright cap. Okay, so a bright cap is a little capacitor mm -hmm. that's on the uh, master volume, which gets more and more subtle the higher up you turn it. So you can't see this. This, ma this master control here is literally three quarters of the way up. Um, we would put it all the way up, but we're just a bit nervous for our hearing. Uh, but the higher it gets, the more that bright cap gets kind of okay. mit mitigated. Um, I, I'm not sure. I think the reason they did that was because at lower volumes, it didn't sound so woofy. Mm -hmm. um, but as a result, they're really bright. And uh, traditionally as well, you'd put a Marshall through a 412 cabinet, which would again, more spread of sound, yeah. more bass, more things like that. We're only using a 112, so it's very directional. Um, but it sounds great, and it has got more gain on it. There is the high channel here. I'm a bit hesitant to plug that in because that will kill us. Um, uh, but yeah, with your volume turned down, you find with that bright cap, it actually stays clean really quite nicely. So try and play some clean stuff with a lowered volume. Marshall not traditionally known for their clean jury, are they? No, yeah. no, and uh, I think half of the problem with that is people see a Marshall and they gain it up, mm. and they just kind of go, oh, there's a gain of 10, or yeah. they turn it up. And uh, I always, I'm always a fan of finding that sweet sweet spot on an amp where it's loud enough that it's distorting, but you can control it with the volume and you don't, if you gain, the problem is if you gain an amp up too much, yeah. and then you start on 10, yeah. and then you start rolling things back, you end up with too much treble, mm -hmm. the gain kind of just, clouds everything you don't get a nice clean out of it yeah, so I always thought the Jubilee that I had the Silver Jubilee had a really lovely clean sound on it yeah and it was one of the best clean sounds I've had on the Marshall yeah because like I said they're not renowned for their clean sounds are they they're no. not, that's what the Fender's market is I had an 800 for a little while I had a 112 800 and that had a great clean sound on it and yeah. it had a clean channel and it yeah. was really really nice so don't underestimate the Marshall clean sounds they are really they yeah. are really really nice yeah um that's it really about the the JMP. There's not really anything else to to go into. Um, so if we did a little bit of a roundup, yeah. So there's no reverb on this amp either. So it's just literally it is as it is. Yeah. It rocks. There's no reverb. You need to use a pedal or something to, to add reverb if you wanted to mm. to the signal. Uh, if we did a roundup for you know which type of guitar do you think would suit the Marshall, the Vox, and the Fender? So on that note, yeah. we're going to do this really really quick. You want to put you want to put the telly in, don't you? Uh, let's try the telly <laughs> through this. I'll play it because I might be able to. To cut it back a little bit. Have you got yeah. a pick I can borrow that? Right yeah. Thank you very much. Right. So this is this right here is why you don't have to get ready for it. Play. Yeah. <laughs> Not because you, you're playing. No, no, no. <laughs> this is why bright guitars are a bit difficult into Marshalls. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry for it's like, it's like an image of someone on the front row getting a Marshall like that, so in their face. Jimmy Page did the whole first Led Zeppelin <laughs> album as well with a Telecaster, so okay. think about that. That's like it's a cool sound, yeah. And also, um, I think we found out the other, when we were doing our, our big guns roundup, mm -hmm. this is a 60s style telly, so the woods in it are a little bit more subdued, yeah. So, uh, like if a 50 even a, yeah, like that 52 we had that, that time. 52 we had. If we put that in there now, yeah. we would we would go blind. <laughs> it's, it's that level of like, it's that level of loud. It sounds great, um, but you just have to be prepared um, that particularly bright guitars in this amp are gonna struggle a bit, um, but it's a great sound. Yeah, I mean, and not that we want to pigeonhole any guitarist really, but what do you think, as I said, like what do you think, who, what type of guitarist would suit the Marshall, what would suit the Fender, what would suit the Vox? And I know that you could, you can make an amp like this using an EQ pedal wouldn't sound like anything really. Mm -hmm. But w what type of guitar do you think? Because for me, I think the Fender, as we said about the cleans, it was a nice clean, maybe the jazz and blues, that sort of style, or mm -hmm. what do you think? Uh, it, it depends. Like, again, I'm, I've seen some people just completely blow me out of the water with their choices of gear. You yeah. do see gigs where you think that will never work, and it sounds great. 
Um, I would just say, yeah, as a starting point, I think Marshall's for that classic rock thing, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, metal in some cases as well. Uh, Fenders, I mean, I think that would work for anything, yeah. but Fenders will get you definitely part of the way to that blues, jazz, more traditional old school sound. Yeah. And the Vox, I think the Vox is really great for modern stuff, actually. Yeah. You're seeing more and more people coming out with, with the Voxes, especially indie bands. And um, it really cuts through, doesn't it? Yeah, well, and, and it's just that clarity, that sparkly, jangly thing. Yeah, people really, really go to that. I think the reason I like the AC30 um, so much as well is from playing an acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and wanting to do loads of different you, voices. Are you thinking like Arctic Monkey sort of that yeah. Sort of band? Uh, yeah, REM used them as well. Okay. So REM were really big uh, AC30 users. Um, there's just loads of people that could use it, but there's no hard and fast rule, really. Okay. Um, but I would say. Definitely. I mean, they're all great. They're yeah, all awesome. I'm really, I'm really happy to. Own I think the learning from this is just, you know, try, try them out. Go down to a decent music shop that has some of these in stock, mm. and just try them out. And try their. If you're not a gigging guitarist, try their sort of smaller brothers and sisters. So I know that you can. I can't get a JMP the smaller, but you can get something like a DSL twenty. Well, you can get the um, new. So the uh, Marshall have just recently come out with um, their Studio Classic. Yep. and uh, Studio Vintage series, heads, they, which yeah. are little tiny 20 watt version heads. Yeah. Uh, they're not, they don't do a JMP, but they do a, um, a Plexi, so they yeah. do like a Super Lead and, uh, and an 800, yeah. which are kind of the go-to Marshalls. Um, and uh, yeah, the, like look at the cost-effective ones as well. Um, Your Hot Rod Deluxe, which we'll have a look at in a later video, hopefully, yeah. is, is a really great vendor alternative. Mm -hmm. um, I really like, boxes go all the way down to Four watts and ten watts. You can buy an AC4 or an AC10. They're all valve and they sound amazing. Um, it just depends on the application, I suppose, doesn't it? I mean, if you buy a box four watt or something, it will sound great in your living in your room or whatever in your bedroom practicing. Mm. If you took it to gigging, you probably notice it would break up too early in terms of you wouldn't have a lot of headroom. Or it might not even get above the band depending no. on what it is. No, so um, it I'd say on a, application, I suppose. I'd it? say a fifteen. If you go, if you've got a gig with it, mm -hmm. an AC15 or an AC10, probably you'd get away with. Yeah. Um, Conversely, if you're living in a flat or or you've got neighbours, this thing is just not going to work for you. They're just they're too loud. Mm -hmm. They are. I I can't play this really without an attenuator. I've I've maybe gigged it once without, and I got turned to down, told to turn down immediately. They're so loud, but they they just sound best that way. So yeah. the studio environment, they're a cool thing to own. Um, but the twenty watt heads, perfect. Fenders, you can kind of get away with them. I I think the Princeton is awesome. I yeah. think the Hot Rods are, are great. Um, they so are loud though. Like the, yeah. the Hot Rod Forty that I just got, the Hot Rod Deluxe, that is loud. Like at home for practice, it's probably too loud. And I right. I use a volume pedal um, in the in the Flex Loop. Uh, turn the volume pedal right the way down. Like a, when I say a pedal, like a spark booster pedal. Sure. Um, turn that right the way down. Crank the master volume on it. And then it, it gives and you. And then I can give it. But without that, I really can't get it much past one. No. Uh, so, so it is something to think about. It but these are all, so the point of today's video, I guess, is this is what all of this stuff is based off of. Yeah. So if you like the Fender sound, yeah. the Marshall sound, the yeah. Vox sound, we're going to do a video yeah. later on that will give you some and everything else we don't, is sort of, I don't want to say an imitation, but everything else is sort of a, a hat or tip of the hat to the sort of style amps and the, yeah. the Marshall, the Fender and the Vox is, you know, we've got, there's other brands as well. Obviously, we haven't talked about Orange Black, so all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, they're all sort of, you know, Inspired, I would say, from these three main sort of style, style yeah. amps. Yeah, pretty much. It's a Fender style, it's American style clean, a British style clean, or a British style gain. There are American style gains as well. Yeah. With then we're getting into like Mesa Boogie yeah, and, and sort of really, really high end stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to uh, hit subscribe on the Fifty Minute Guitar uh, channel so that you get all of our updates. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.